Welcome to this week's Akers Skybet League One playoff final preview between Bolton and Oxford at Wembley on Saturday. I'm Tom, Jake, Jimmy with me as ever. But of course, a big occasion means we needed to get someone in who actually knows what they're talking about. <laughs> EFL expert Gab Sutton. Welcome back to the podcast. It's been a while since we've had you on. Yeah, it's an absolute pleasure to come on. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, really looking forward to getting into a couple of playoff finals. Who's excited for this? I, mm. I am excited for this because League One to me, out of the three playoff finals, obviously championships still to come, always feels like the playoff final with the most memorable moments. I know Jimmy spent this morning going back through the highlights. <laughs> That's all he's done this morning, isn't so it? Many, it's just like the iconic moments always seem to come from League One's final. Yep. There's only, there's only one I want to talk about. 13, 14, Steve, Steve Evans. Evans run down the touchline. I could have called that instantly. Yeah. <laughs> 1 to 33, The real bit of all this is Alex Rebell, who's got an absolute screamer, but everyone just remembers Steve Evans. Who's his pants? Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Huge iconic Wembley moments. Uh, Steve Evans won't be there this year, I'm afraid. Not for Stevenage. Or Robert, as it is now. Uh, Bolton take on Oxford then. Bolton were a lot of people's favourites. They were the odds... Favourites and the odds, I should say, but lots of people were backing them to do so. Simple question, I suppose, to start with. Do we think they can, it? can do it? Yeah. Or will they do it, I should say? I, I think they're rightly favourites. Um, you know, head-to-head this season, you take it with a pinch of salt, but they've shut Oxford out on both, both occasions. They've conceded um, just over one expected goals across two matches, which shows that their defence is more than capable of stifling this Oxford attack. Um, but I do, I do think this is going to be a lot closer than perhaps the odds... Suggest. Uh, I think Bolton are rightly favourites. I think they're too short, though, to, to actually qualify and get it up. The, I mean, the, the league table points gap between the two was you know, large-ish. Based on the underlying data, they were the fourth and fifth best side in the, in the division. So it's going to be quite a tight game. For some context on there, and I'm sorry to catch you off this, <laughs> but um, if, let's say, non-data people, normal people, <laughs> what <laughs> would be good? Um, you said just over one. What were we looking at here? What would that kind of... the uh, a decent margin be on the uh, well, well, I mean, Bolton won the XG battle on both occasions. They racked up 1.2 away from home, 1.8 at home, which is kind of, yeah, that's a level of dominance that you'd expect to see, especially with the defensive data they put up in both those matches as well. So, I, I mean, against a fellow contender, I would have at least expected 1.2 XG across both games. Um, one, what's that? 2.4 in total. So they've fallen well short of what I expected from a, a potential promotion candidate. So that's where I would be looking. Um, but, you know, when we get on to Oxford, we'll talk Bolton. That they're definitely a team trending positively, Oxford. I think what really stands out to me about Bolton is that they've been challenging all season. And while they've had a, a few wobbles in that time, I think I'm more convinced, I feel more bullish about them than I do Oxford. Because while over the last month of the league campaign, Oxford have found a formula under Des Buckingham and they have started to click a little bit more. Let's not forget Ox- um, Bolton beat them 5-0 um, a, a few weeks ago. And um, obviously, I don't think it's going to be quite as straightforward um, as that. But um, for me, Bolton, Josh, Sheen in midfield is the one for me, the way he conducts play and controls things. Um, I, I, I expect him to do the same at Wembley. You back Bolton, did you? Did you do our league one outright on sites? Oh. Are you still confident the job will get done, Jimmy and the odds? They are four to nine to get promoted. Shit, yeah. Four to nine. I don't really like to talk about it, but I have tipped Bolton to go up. <laughs> but, and I mentioned that they're probably going to beat Oxford in the final before a ball was kicked. You didn't want to tip up the straight forecast. Do you actually, or do we have to go back and check this? Get it up on TikTok. Okay. Well, you said Peterborough, and I said nah. Uh, uh. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Sorry. Just because you're an Adrian Campo lookalike, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's that, I think that's a, it's that, I reckon that's a compliment. Yeah. yeah. What, what a, a good player. Like to be what a London. player. I <laughs> heard he didn't even use to tie his laces. <laughs> didn't use to tie his laces. Oh, is that why you trip up all the time? Tuck, tuck Maybe do I. Oh. Did you tuck him into his boots? Yeah, yeah, just played with him, that's baggy. Trip, that is a tripping hazard. Yeah, just a bit. Um, Health and safety gone kind of man. Sidetrack there with humble brag and. Well, you <laughs> um, still confident in Bolton. Can you tell a massively. The performances so far. Can you tell I'm massively underprepared for this? Go on, yeah. <laughs> Let's keep you blagging. No, um, Gab made an excellent point on Oxford. I was just looking back at my preview thinking, how can I get some notes from this? The, it is some U turn, and traditionally the, the, the B Tech, the basic logic is going into the playoff who's in form mm-hmm. and Oxford are that team in form and 
they got through the semi-finals relatively unscathed and I am a bit concerned about my outright pick because I, I just feel like they are coming in hot. Bolton, on the other hand, I thought they'd get to the final in a canter and that looked to be the case until Barnsley just... Well, second half, Barnsley were massively the better team. If they didn't, if they didn't consider a really soft corner, but Bolton might have not even made it to the final, so I'm a little bit... Just, just throw in there, Jimmy, I think the big thing is game state. It's like, because you could ask similar questions, I think, of Oxford based on their performances over the playoffs, but when you've got something to protect, does that dictate the game state a little bit more? And you naturally become before? a bit more... Yeah. In, like, and, well, and, I suppose, and likewise, yeah. the opposition, um, it's like everything's on the line, so they've got to push forward. Kitchen so sink, sometimes yeah. game state can dictate like XG and, and how, how games look, and um, it's a difficult one to judge how, yeah. how much you read into that. I think of the semi-finals, I definitely would give more credit to Oxford than Bolton, because they had the tougher assignment against Peterborough as opposed to Barnsley. The way in which they handled them in the second leg away from home when people were chasing the game and they had to go out there and win, had to get a result. Mm. The way in which Oxford defended and limited Peterborough, I thought was really impressive. Uh, yes, but I, I also think probably partly due to Peterborough maybe having certain limitations perhaps because although they are, they have been the best attacking team over the course of the season, they've not really got an out-and-out goal-scoring, well... Jo they've got Johnson Clark Harris, but for different reasons, he hasn't been the starting centre forward. So they've kind of missed that clinical edge, I think, Peterborough as well. And maybe in the first leg, even they maybe didn't quite make the most of their sort of control that they, they had. So um, I think I'd give Oxford some credit for their organisation, but I also think maybe they rode their luck a little bit as well. I think we're getting into contrasting opinions because it does bring us nicely on to Oxford, yeah. actually. Des Buckland's done a good job, hasn't he? From the early downturn of Liam Manning departing to go to Bristol City, there was a natural downturn. I think it was very clear that there wasn't just going to be a continuation, there wasn't going to be new ideas that have come in that have had, uh, that have happened, I should say. But so much of the attention, I think, will be on Bolton in terms of their crowd numbers. But this is an Oxford side, a club that have been limited by a stadium that's three sides, effectively. It's a team that have had a 25-year wait to return to the second tier, have dropped down to the non-league conference, national, I believe, as it was called at the time, and Chris Wilder got that. It's been a long time waiting for a club of a decent stature as well. That should always give you something into a playoff final, surely. I think Bolton are probably more ready for this player final and certainly for the championship because um, they've challenged consistently. I think they finished ninth in their first season up, then got to the playoffs uh, last season and finished fourth or fifth, I think. Um, and then um, and then this year, I think, feels like the one for me. That's my instinct on it. Whereas I think with Oxford, uh, I think you've got to give Des Buckingham some credit for the way they finished the season after things had looked a little bit precarious before that. Um, but I think he's still developing as a coach. I think he's still getting used to um, English football to an extent. So for me, Bolton are ready for this big occasion and for the challenges that would come after. Give us some data points that get me excited about Oxford here. Because <laughs> Jimmy's tipped day, Bolton, uh, he's now day, uh. thinking about Oxford. Gab seems pretty commit committed to the Bolton. I'm on the fence, mm. I'll be truly honest. So I need some data points here to get me excited about this. Yes. Yeah. Well, like Jim said, Oxford were the hottest team finishing the season. Um, the data backs that up. They were the best team according to expected goals across the last eight League One matches. The results were good, won five, drew two, lost one. Um, but yeah, the underlying data was really strong, especially defensively. They conceded just 0.8 expected goals per game across that eight match span. And you look at the, the, the fixtures they had, there were a couple of tough games. They obviously had that massive clash with Lincoln in there, which was, they ended up losing, but that, that felt like a, a game that they, was huge for the top six. Yeah. Um, but they were creating loads of chances as well, over two expected goals for. So they, were, they found a really nice balance. And like I said, I was really impressed with the, the data against Peterborough because they did limit them exceptionally well um, over two legs. And, and I think that that definitely leads me to thinking that they've got a really good chance of upsetting Bolton um, in, in what is going to be a, a... I think it'll be a cagey final. I don't think there'll be too many goals, but... Um, you, oh, what was that? What was that noise? Uh, it's interesting, though, because I think that you teased it and um, this is a betting podcast, right? Yeah. Called This Week's Hacker. People are going to tell me some fucking bets. <laughs> Where are we looking in this game? And obviously, you can't build an hacker. You can build your builder bets and stuff like that. Um, players to target players. in Ooh. this game or areas to target mm. in this game that we think immediately jump out. Well, for me, what's really interesting is that um, although um, uh, they, 
these teams play slightly different formations. They both play with uh, one you know, sitting midfielder and two attacking. And I think what's going to be really interesting for me is how much can Josh Sheehan dictate in possession, but also look after Ruben Rodriguez and Tyler Goodrum with the runs that they like to make. And then similarly, what can... Um, uh, the uh, Cameron Brannigan do to cope with Bolton's two number eights as well. So I think that's going to dictate a lot. And whoever of Josh Sheen or Cameron Brannigan um, can sort of do more in terms of running the show, um, I think that that team's got a great chance of winning. You get so many prop markets now, and I think if you go to Oxford and you stick Cameron Brannigan in any of them, that's <laughs> probably got a good chance of winning. Penalty, uh, penalty, penalty goals, game. assists, fouls, tackle, basically every market you can bet on, he seemingly is involved. Um, who else? Where else can we look? Set pieces. Set I, pieces? You know what? I, I didn't want to say explicitly set pieces, but I knew I wanted to steer in that direction because I know you are quite excited about the possibility of set pieces oh, in this final. Oh, yeah. I was looking over some historical data. <laughs> Sorry, Jake. Um, you were looking at data? Yeah. I just find a nap spot. Uh, while you chat away. <laughs> I'll just I'll put that down here. On no, you'll like it, you'll like it, you'll like it, I swear. Uh, of the 26 goals to be scored over the last 10 years in playoff finals, how much would you reckon are from set pieces? Oh. 26 in total. I'll guess I 12. Know the, I know the answer because he told me before. Well, you just guess really low. So uh, I'd have to go three. Well, you'd be surprised. It's yeah, actually... I, 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 I'm going to guess, based on the fact that you've brought it up in the first place, that it's higher than expected. So I'm going to go 15. Well, it's 10. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the two pieces have really diluted the point, but that's a significant percentage. That is a lot, isn't it? 10 of 26, is, yeah. thank you. And Bolton, they've got 21 set piece goals this season, second in the league, fifth, joint fifth overall in the top four divisions. So I just got sidelined massively by that, thinking who's going to score. And I said to you, Duffman, in the office, if I said to you, in fact, Gab, Jake, if you can close your eyes now. So it's like... Play some calming, relaxing. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not calming. It's oh, like right, the... Okay. I say it's late on, like, last 15 minutes, commentator Later. goes... 93rd. 93rd. 90 plus three. He goes, come off the man, come off the hour. Who is it who's just scored from a set piece? Ricardo Santos. We both said the same. Uh, well, he hasn't scored this season, but what a time. <laughs> <laughs> but is there ever a time to get your first goal? Now is, now is, now. It's only really? Jimmy, got... I've got a question for you. Why do you think that is, that 10 goals in the last 26, of, uh, of the last 26 in player finals have been from set pieces? Do you think it's because it's tight games and they're yes. often... What a question. I, I think so. What a question. <laughs> and excellently <laughs> asked. Yeah. yeah. I just think... I think there's a few things, one of which is set pieces are massively one undervalued asset of lower divisions, but something that if you get right, you are going to be in the mix. You see it, Steve Evans' entire reputation without being too blasé is almost built on set pieces. You look at the percent of goals his side get from them, you're looking at about 20, 30% a season. So you're getting towards, you're knocking on the door in the League One, League Two, a large percentage of your goals as a general rule, are going to be from dead ball situations. And also the dynamic of the game. You look at Derby's Cup Finals. The, the, the majority of the goals seem, do just seem to come from dead ball situations. As for the reason, like you say, they're often caging nervy affairs and where, like we just said, where, where the big characters do seem to step up more often than not. So you're back in Santos then, are you? No, that was just... <laughs> <laughs> After all that, wasting two minutes, sorry. <laughs> no, that was my bridging. It's actually um, Owen Toyle, he got a goal against Barnsley. I think he's got five for the season. He's averaging just under a shot per game. He would be my pick. He's only a point shorter. He's only priced up with 365, but he's only a point shorter than Santos. What about Elliot Moore? Anyone reckon Elliot Moore could get on the end of a... Could you see come up the hour, come for the man type, uh, no. type things on this one? I mean, to be fair, by the sounds of it, the way we're rooting is whether you want to take one of those bottom set pieces is your route to success. Yes, uh, I cover one. both centre backs, but 365 is the only one to price it as of yet, but Sky and Betfair are usually brilliant prices, especially Sky with centre backs. Let's wrap it up with some verdicts on this game then. I want a score prediction, nine minutes over. If you go over draw, you can have an extra time verdict. And that one kind of best bet, one angle that you are targeting in this game. 3-0 three, uh, three to Bolton. Oh, confidence! <laughs> That's what I'm going with. Confidence. Uh, one best bet, if you have one? 
Um, I'm going to say Bolton to win in 90 minutes. Nice and simple. Don't overcomplicate it, Jake. Uh, one nil Bolton. I think it'll be tighter than what Gab thinks. I, I like both teams to score no, which is about even money. But also Thomas and Card. I mean, how did nobody mention? I know. Thomas well, and Card <laughs> he was he was talking for so long I couldn't get in. Um, yeah, he's three straight games with the Card. Sixteen yellows, one red all season. Card penalty of 0.45. So anything eleven to four ish or higher, take it. Jim Rod, score prediction and which Bolton centre back you're taking, please. I, I think the complete opposite. I think there's going to be goals and lots of them. Three two Bolton. And my pick is probably Santos to score any time. I'm hoping for a big prize. <laughs> Both centre backs. Come up for the hour, come up for the man type thing. I'll take 2 1 Bolton and Thomason Card because it has been good so far. If you are in a bet on the game, as ever, remember to gamble responsibly. Never bet more than you can afford. Head over to spotlight.com forward slash football. You'll find our preview content, everything you need for all of the playoff games taking place this week. And these shirts here as well, if you head to our TikTok channel, you'll find out how you can win them. Put them in your house, wear them, do whatever you want with them as well. <laughs> good luck to Oxford, good luck to Bolton as well.